How's everyone doing today? Good? Awesome. Uh, people ask that tomorrow, and everyone's going to be like, uh, I don't know. Uh, all sleepy and everything. But the after party's tomorrow night, so that should help for tomorrow. My name is Mike Demo, and has anyone seen one of my talks before? Maybe at the last Phoenix? Yeah. Um, so I have a tendency to throw things at people, so just be aware of that. Um, uh, my name is Mike Demo. Yes, that is my real name, or at least part of my real name. If you really get on my good side, you might know my full name. There's maybe six people here that do, um, or can use LinkedIn. Um, but first of all, who am I? Why am I here? I'm an evangelist at BoldGrid. BoldGrid is a suite of plugins for WordPress that makes WordPress easier to use. You can check us out at boldgrid.com, and that's enough talking about BoldGrid. Um, but that's kind of why I'm here. They're the ones that sponsor me to be able to go out full time and travel for this um, community. I spent 175 nights in a hotel room last year for WordPress. So I definitely love uh, community and connecting with people, and this is really what my passion is. Um, I'm also the uh, treasurer of Open Source Matters. For those of you who saw the earlier talk, you know, don't give it away. Does anyone here know what Open Source Matters is? couple people. Yeah, this is usually where I'm like, hey, Open Source Matters is basically the Joomla Foundation. It's the legal entity of the Joomla project. And then this is when they're like, call security. Call security. Why is there a Joomla guy in the building? <laughs> you know, we're WordPress. We don't like those Joomla and Drupal people, you know? But here's the thing, guys, is that I started in the Joomla community. It really got me started on my career. I think it's an amazing tool set, but I don't give a shit what tools you use. Tools are tools, in my opinion. WordPress is an amazing tool. I've come to love it. I have lots of freelance clients on it. And it helped, it's helped so many people create this web that they never thought they'd have the a power to do it. But for certain use cases, maybe Drupal's a better fit, or Magento, or Joomla, or whatever the case is. So I strongly encourage everyone to go out there and go into other open source communities. Maybe it's JavaScript, maybe it's PHP. You'll meet amazing people. And here's the thing is they all have marketing tracks. Marketing tracks are CMS agnostic. So I think we're too held up in the open source community to say things like, oh, well, I'm team WordPress and everyone else sucks because you want to be part of a winning team. Um, the, my last talk here at Phoenix was basically talking about that, that open source should come first. That's why I do contribute to uh, the Joomla project because it's kind of where my roots are and it's, it's kind of a way I can give back. Um, I'm also a husband, video game lo lover, former Disney cast member. The closer I get to the coast, the less impressive that sounds. Um, and I'm also an owner of a wonderful dog. But traveling around, I get to see all sorts of very different people. Anyone here from Salt Lake City? No? OK. Uh, a couple, yeah, couple Salt, Salt Lake City people. Well, I went to a conference there. It was a DIY bloggers conference. It was a mommy blogs conference. And I was one of three men in the entire conference. It was very exciting. Um, this is a live picture. Well, not live, but this is a picture I took at their unicorn party, and those are professional male dancers in Salt Lake City dressed as unicorns. So I experience all sorts of uh, things. Actually, I'm here at the Sheridan Grand, which is downtown Phoenix, and there's a women's conference going on, and I had breakfast. I was literally the only guy in the entire restaurant. So I kind of felt like I was you know, back at the Merge Conference at that time. Um, I also love WordPress because it's inclusive. I love how inclusive this community is. I love how we are um, reaching out and helping all these different people from different walks of life, and people can be who they are. I say a lot of times when I give talks that you can have religious, political, um, or fundamental disagreements with people in this community, but when we come to a WordCamp or we go to um, contribute on WordPress core, it's all about WordPress because we're here as a WordPress family first, because everyone's going to have different um, opinions and, and walks of life and religious um, views, and that's okay. You know, our job isn't to change um, what people believe, but I think our job is to accept people where they are, and I love how WordPress does a really good job at that. I'm proud to be part of this community, and I was happy to be welcomed, you know, even as a Joomla guy when I started coming to WordCamps years ago. Because um, WordPress is people. WordPress is just people. Um, open source is just people. I promise real quick I'm going to ta start talking about ducks. So, um, But WordPress is just people, and it's a real passion of mine. Um, go look up at the talk at WordPress TV that I gave at the last Phoenix. I really, really, really just um, love the people at these communities, and I've made awesome friendships that I never would have as it wouldn't be for WordPress. So I definitely owe a lot to the project for that. 
Um, and open source is great. So uh, open source is one of the best tools out there. And we're very lucky to be able to have open source and have the software be free. I don't think people understand how lucky we are to have open source even be a philosophy. And a lot of people take it for granted. Um, but these are real licenses with real legal consequences. And it's r pretty damn amazing that it even exists. Um, the closest analog I can think of is the polio vaccine. The person who invented the polio vaccine didn't patent it. He wanted to say that you can't patent the sun. He wanted to give it out there so that people could save lives. Very similar to kind of the open source philosophy, but that was for, for medicine back in the day. So enough of my soapbox. Let's talk about ducks. Um, who here came because this talk had ducks in the title? A couple people? Yeah. So uh, who here, and I always laugh that they put this as a designer track. Who here is the designer in the room? Who's a designer, OK? Who's a photographer? You're going to hate me. You're going to hate me. So this talk is a talk that is very different to A-B testing. And I want to shake you up and get you thinking about A-B testing in a much different way, in ways that I guarantee you've never thought about before. So with that, I have lots of batshit crazy examples of um, A-B tests that work. I've done A-B tests on Fortune 500 companies. Um, I used to be the in charge of a digital apartment at a downtown Minneapolis agency. I have also been in charge of digital departments at agencies that did hundreds of bank clients and things like that. So I've definitely seen some of the crazy stuff. And um, yes, there are trends. So this isn't a talk about you know what tools are best. This isn't a talk about how to what the perfect uh, test to do to make you a lot of money is. This is a test about what I call the magic money machine. The magic money machine is the website. The website for your client is their magic money machine. And I literally love A-B testing because it's the only thing you can do that will make you more money month and month again. And it just kind of runs on autopilot. If I ask a client and I say, Mr. Client, if I can prove to you for every dollar you stick in your magic money machine, two dollars pops out. And I can prove it. How many dollars would you put in there? The answer to that is unlimited dollars. And that's what A-B testing gives us. It gives us the power to show that the magic money machine is working. All, all the work you did for the website is working. It allows you to make all of this um, wonderful residual income and not have to worry about you know, a new website um, time and time again. And we're going to talk about some different philosophies that kind of go with that and some different ideas and some real world case studies um, that have to do with this. So, uh, with that, you know, water. Excuse me. Um, let's kind of get into it. So, anyone here done any A/B testing or split testing? Okay. Anyone willing to share your experience? Anyone? Okay. Give me. What did you? What was the test? So a newsletter opt-in, different calls to actions, OK? Was it for like your own site or a client, or? OK, cool. And was the result, did, was it actionable? Like, did you get a, um, a good result at the end of it, or did it kind of wash out? And sure. Right away, OK. So it's kind of like little gains, but maybe not in the margin, you know, kind of in the margin of error? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So when you find kind of the magic settings, as I call it, you know, it kind of just screams and it kind of works. And so, and websites change. Anyone else want to give an example? Okay, so we're advertising different headlines and things and see which one converts better and then maybe put more budget to the one that wins. Cool. Auto optimize. Cool. Cool, cool. Excellent. Um, who now? Who here has had an experience like this? Because most people I talk to when I talk about A-B testing, they give me this story. Well, I changed a bunch of things on my website and sales went up. Or I changed a bunch of things on my website and sales went down. And I have no idea why. And then I kept changing more and more stuff and then results kept happening and I have no idea why. Anyone here do the like shotgun approach to A-B testing, things like that? Just thinking, just making changes on the site and making more and more changes to the site and let's make some more changes to the site is going to make all the difference in the world. That's, that's how most people kind of work with their websites, is they 
throw, what, they throw stuff at the wall and see what sticks. Most people don't actually sit down and look at a plan. So with that, um, who here before they start a website, they write down an actionable goal on why that website exists? Okay, more than normally. Um, either you're lying or <laughs> Phoenix is way uh, more on top of it than everywhere else I've done this. So really, I write down the purpose of, a we purpose of why does a site exist? Every website has a goal. And if you need to ask the client, what's the purpose of the site? How in a year from now are you going to know if this website is a success or a failure? And it can't be subjective. How many times have you made a website for a client and the client loved it at launch? Loved it. Six months later, you talk to them. How's the website doing? Well, it's not doing as much as we hoped. Well, the design's nice, but it's not giving us the results we expected. Anyone had the honeymoon phase end on them with a client? Yeah, a couple people. Um, that happens all the time because clients like new and shiny things. People think they want a new website because they're self-prescribing what they think they need. What you need to do is sit down, why does this site exist, and write down what the goal is. What do you need to deliver to make this project a success? And usually that answer is not a pretty website at the end. Sure, design's important and all that fun stuff's great, but if your website doesn't perform, it's just a waste of money, and then why should you even take the client's money? So you have to make sure that you have an actionable yes or no answer to any work that you do for any client, um, and, I, you know, and I write it down. I write SMART goals. Specific, measurable, attainable, time-specific. We're going back to high school, um, and it's very, very easy to kind of focus on that. And it has to be controlled. So, with this, with A-B testing, you need to do controlled. So um, there are lots of ways to do A-B testing, some plugins, you can do things on production, whatever the heck you want to do. But I recommend using a tool um, that will do the math for you. Anyone here have a doctorate in data analysis? No. And you guys make websites for a living? Well, we should just quit right now. I just, I don't know how you're going to survive. Um, <laughs> Funny story, I said that in California, and this one guy's like, yep, PhD, 12 years, and he gave his university and everything, and I'm just like, well, he can be a web designer, none of you can. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> that was pretty funny. Um, although he did agree with what, what my talk was about, which made me feel, feel a little bit validated, because I don't have a PhD either. In fact, um, I was lucky enough um, in my career path to drop out of school my freshman year, and I never graduated. And I've been happy to be able to be able to be a thought leader and talk to thousands and thousands of people. I've given this talk to over 10,000 people across the world um, at all of these other conferences and things. I really am lucky and fortunate. And, um, but you know, with that, so okay, data analysis. You need to make sure that it's a margin of error. When you do testing, there's a margin of error. Similar to what the gentleman down here said, is that like, oh, it sometimes you know, one, it has a low traffic site. A couple conversions can make the difference in the world. You know, if you have a low traffic site, five sales can throw it out the window. I had this one client, they're like, oh my goodness, we did some changes and our sales went, went up, you know, tenfold because we did this change. I'm like, okay, uh, how was that year over year? They were a retailer and they were comparing September to November. Well, what happens in the fall on retailers? Usually they sell more because it's the holiday season. Um, so yeah, it's not as actionable unless you look at the data. So with that, it needs to be a controlled test. Um, there's a lot of things called single variant and multivariant testing. All that boils down to is how many things you're gonna test on the page at once. I highly, 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 highly recommend you do single variant testing. That means change one element at a time and do multivariations of that single element. Don't change like five elements at a time. So let's take a call to action button. You could change the color the font, the drop shadow, um, and the position. That's four different elements, and you can try different combinations thereof. Unless you have a high traffic website, and I mean high traffic, um, you are just gonna take forever to get that many results to go through. So I would focus on single elements, get the winners, and use a tool that will tell you yes or no, is this within the margin of error? Is this test actionable, or is it not? Is it you know, gonna give you the results that you want? It's gonna, there are tools out there like um, Optimizely and BWO and some other ones that will tell you yes or no answers. This, this is a winner, implement this. It's a loser, kill it, or not enough data. 
that is what you need to focus on so that you have a yes or no answer. Now, a lot of people say, oh, what WordPress plugin do you use for this? I personally don't use any WordPress plugins. Um, I do everything through a third-party tool. Um, I use VWL, which stands for Visual Website Optimizer. The reason I do that is very simple. It does no changes on production, period. Unless you are extremely good with robots files, you never want Google to index your test. You just don't. Um, so, you know, look at some of those tools. There are WordPress tools out there, but most of them will create different copies of the site, of the page, things like that. Some of them can get indexed. Um, if you have one that works for you, great, use it. Um, but I like to use the third party tools, and it requires no development. You can have a marketing person do this, um, do these tests with no CSS or anything because it's that sort of VWL. Optimizely does the same thing too. Um, so controlled. Needs to be statistically relevant, like we talked about, inside the margin of error. Well, outside the margin of error, I should say. Uh, micro testing. Do a single um, variant at a time. Don't do multivariant testing. Those tools can help you do multivariant testing, but they'll tell you if you have enough traffic to make sure um, to do multivariant testing or not. What to test? Okay, shout it out. What can you change on a website? What are the different variables you can change on a website? Color. I told you I throw stuff. Font size, I images, text, call to action. Okay, cool. Basically, you can test lots of different things. So I'm going to talk about some examples, then I'm going to go through some batch of crazy examples. So buttons, you can test so many things with buttons. I, you know how many people tell me like, oh my God, there's nothing I can test on my website. I, I, I don't have any testing ideas. I'm like. You literally have thousands of opportunities to test in your website. You can test for years on a single landing page and never be, never go, grow tired. Buttons, call to action, the font, the size, the, the case, the drop shadow. I had a client, national insurance company. Can't say the name, but they're a national insurance company. Um, and they, their thing was they wanted to have more quotes. People get more quotes, more people buy, things like that. I tested everything. I did user group studies on, the, on these people to try to see how we can convert them more. Well, we got them an 80% lift. I was so, we were blown away by this 80% lift. I didn't trust it, so I tested it again for another 100,000 visitors. 80% lift, tested it again with another 100,000 visitors. Not proud of this, but a two pixel drop shadow gave an 80% difference in conversions for this client. Two pixels. If I showed them to you side by side, well, you guys as designers could probably tell, but most people uh, probably couldn't. And again, throw out what you think you know. That's the number one takeaway of my talk is, here's the secret about website design that nobody talks about. We're guessing. <laughs> Seriously, we're guessing. We're taking educated guesses based on how we know the users to interact with the site and we're making the best guess and the best product at the time. But it's just that, at the time. Before response, a mobile uh, websites were even a thing and it was all fixed width displays. Fixed width was was you know, the best thing to do. And now when responsive came in, oh, we have to do responsive and all this other stuff. But here's the thing is we're guessing. You are looking at a single point in time when you're doing your best guess. And if you think you know the visitors to that website, I guarantee you you're wrong. And if you think your client knows the visitors to their website, I guarantee you they're definitely wrong. Because they all have preconceived notions and every set of users are so different. And the only way to take that website which is good to great is to test it and change it. This is so much so that HubSpot now teaches us. Anyone here hear of HubSpot? Yeah, a lot of people, right? They now have a course that's called Growth Driven Design, GDD. And their agencies that follow Growth Driven Design make 80% more revenue than they, their agencies that don't. You know what Growth Driven Design is? Selling A-B testing on a monthly basis and doing changes based on the results. That's all it is with a fancy name. It's a great course, I highly recommend you take it, it's free, it's made by my buddy Luke Summerfield over at HubSpot, but that's all it is. We are so apt to make a website that's a single point in time because this is what clients do. 
Oh, I made a website four years ago, and it was a lot of work, and I was happy to be done with it, and I haven't touched it in four years. That, and then another four, then I'll ignore this one, because this website's gonna be a whole big project, and I need to focus on my business, but then I won't, I'll, I'll ignore that for two to four years. Yeah, I'll tell you I'm gonna blog, but I'm not gonna blog. You know, That's what clients do. They look at this website cycle. Why do we have this? It's better for you to keep the residual income. It's better for them to have a site that's always evolving. Their site two years from now should not look the same as today because things change. Technology change, users change, devices change. And if you can prove to them that, that you keeping them on retainer will make them more money or whatever their goal is, they have no reason in the world to say no because you're proving your worth with data every time. And that's the thing I care most about is I don't care why things happen, I care about data. Data-driven decisions. I live my life by data-driven decisions. I try not to think about why users interact with those things, just data-driven decisions. So text. You can te uh, test between copy, you know, custom content or boilerplate content or short words, things like that. Um, there are times when um, I've seen tests of lorem ipsum perform better in testimonials than real testimonials. <laughs> By about four times. And yes, that might not be an example that you actually do, although fun thing, if you ever want a client to think you wrote their copy for them, try corporate ipsum. Anyone here use corporate ipsum? I've had five clients thank me for writing their copy for them. And I'm like, you should read it. <laughs> because I'm not a copywriter. Um, text. Images. So many things you can do with images. We're gonna go over some crazy examples in a little bit too. Um, so many things you can do with images, but let's talk about the duck, getting to the duck. There was a study that a picture of a right-facing duck converted um, eight, um, like nine times, nine X more than the left-facing duck. Can anyone tell me why the right-facing duck converted more than the left-facing duck? Anyone have any ideas? Right to more positive, pointing the content, Maybe that it was looking at a button or something like that. Um, what? Left to right reading. Anyone else? Looking forward. That's very close to what I get every fourth time I give this talk. I've given it about 90 times. Someone always says, because the duck is looking into the future. Um, yeah, because to the right. Um, but here's the reason it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Stop trying to assign reason. Web designers, they, we think that we all have PhDs in psychology. It doesn't matter. Data matters. If you can prove with data that something that you have just cringe at because it's not the right way to do it, but it's gonna make your client five times more money, you are doing a disservice to your client because you're selfish with your own biases. Your client is why we're here. You're not building the website for you. You're not building the website for your client. You're building it for their users. And the data is what's gonna move the needle in the direction that they want. Because that's the only reason they hire us, is to make the magic money machine work better. And do sometimes tests that work today, it might not work in two years from now, definitely. Things change all the time. Test everything. Test everything. And for those of you who think that, you know what? You know what, Mr. Demo, if that is your real name? This all sounds fine and good, but my clients are special. I can't do that. I know what I'm doing. And don't, tell, don't, don't make me think, I don't think everyone here is a professional. We, have best, we, have, we look at case studies. We look at how users interact. We look at the analytics. We are making great websites, we're making great work, but they are not out of the box doing anywhere near the performance level that they could be doing. And you owe it to your clients and to yourself and to your wallets, quite frankly, to make sure that your, every product you put out is as best as possible. And that's why A-B testing is pretty cool. So here's where I start talking about the, uh, the presidential campaign. So just warning, warning on that. Um, so, Donald Trump, we'll talk about him first. Um, one of his most successful fundraising campaigns, oh, people are already crossing their arms, okay, I get it. Um, I'll get to Hillary Clinton too, just, um, of the campaign was a thing. You could donate and your money would be live on their Facebook page. Your name would be live on their Facebook page. 
I get it. I might not personally choose to donate to that cause, um, but I get it, right? Everyone, I think, can agree that political campaigns are well-oiled machines and they detest to figure out how to get the best contributions. I don't care if you're Democrat, Republican, whatever. There are companies that make a lot of money doing this full time. But one of their most uh, successful fundraising campaigns is the campaign. A week before the election, donate money, own a piece of the campaign, get your name on the Facebook page live. I get it, people can own the campaign, whatever. Maybe not my personal cup of tea, but that's okay. Can anyone tell me some technical solutions if you were hired by Donald Trump um, and you were asked to do that? How would you do that technically? Like how would you like make a feed of the donors as they come in? No ideas? Let's assume you took the job and then There's a lot, you can do API, you can do some fancy video stuff, you can do some scroll, you can edit a text document. What they did, and this went on for seven hours, and I'm not making this up. Um, based on what we know about FCC filings, it was one of the most successful fundraising campaigns the Trump campaign ever did. They had a live webcam of a laser printer. And I know what you're thinking, that's a nice printer. <laughs> that's in Trump Tower. That ink is probably gold plated. But no, here's my point, guys. I think we can all agree that the Trump organization values the brand. You know, right? Um, and if they can do this, you can make it work for your client. Sometimes crazy stuff works. And if you think for a second, this is out of touch, and they don't know any better. This was not a mistake. This was 100% deliberate because they knew who they were going after for their campaign. And it worked. Eight hours, this was live, raising millions and millions of dollars. And this is probably one of the ugliest um, things I've ever seen on the modern internet. Oh, and, uh, and, uh, and every once in a while, they had a hand that came in with a handwritten sign that said, drain the swamp, donate it, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> He's, thank you. So, yeah, uh, Hillary Clinton's done things with like different giveaways and things like that as well. So let's go into my crazy list real quick. And then I'll just kind of blow through this um, really qu quick. You can leave the video up because it's scrolled. Um, professional versus unprofessional. Sometimes unprofessional works. It doesn't always have to be the most polished thing. Sometimes the thing works better. Has anyone here ever gotten one of those uh, letter, those multi-page letters with like things scribbled out in the comments to give money to save unicorns or whatever? Um, it works. For certain people, that works. Photo versus illustration. Sometimes photos don't work. Um, sometimes illustrations are better. One color versus another color. Um, if you need some color ideas, try making your colors accessible. It's a good, easy test to do. It's the right thing to do, and you'll probably get better results because one out of every four Americans have something that's covered under the WCAG 2.0 accessibility guidelines. High brightness contrast versus low brightness contrast, border versus no border, clear image versus blurry image, static versus animated, and this, just imagine that it's kind of, that, that, that is animated, just so you know. Um, Boring versus sex appeal. Um, choose your discount, either get 50% off or choose if you wanna get 50% off the pizza or the donut. Uh, professional stock photos versus amateur and in, uh, informal photos. The photographers, who here refuses to use stock photos? Who here will never use a stock photo in their life? A couple of people. Certain people, stock photos convert way more than original photography, it just does. That's why it's great to test this. And for those people uh, who only have stock photos and can't get original photography, there are stock photo companies that specialize in non-stock looking stock photos. So that is the thing out there. One layout versus another layout, one call to action versus another call to action, images versus text only. Don't discount the text only thing. That works way more than you think um, for certain types of users. And I see that convert very well. Upright versus angled, blue versus blue underlined text. Um, false border and drop shadow versus no drop shadow. There's my friend the drop shadow again. Uh, familiar ad design versus something like, you know, uh, making it look like in elements that we kind of use. By the way, I'm not saying make people think they're on Facebook, that is another word for it, um, crud. So, 
Uh, original image versus mirror image, there's our duck again, one font size style case versus another font size style case. Standardized shape like a rectangle or a custom ad shape like a circle or in today's web, a standard ad shape like a circle or a custom ad shape like a rectangle. Um, positive versus negative, want to fall in love with your spouse again or sick of fighting with your spouse. I had a client, they had a product that stopped stove fires. You know what worked for marketing? Your mom's going to leave the stove unattended, you ha she's going to die and it's going to be your fault. Because the most common cause of house fires is unattended stoves. Fallen and I can't get up, lifeline. There's a reason that stuff exists. Generic versus relevant to time period. Mention prices or discounts and leave it a mystery. Use trust logos, don't use trust logos. Um, if you use the Better Business, you, uh, Better Business Bureau logo, please make sure you have the rights to use it. And just because they're a member does not mean they have the rights to use it on the web. That's an extra fee and they do sue a lot. <laughs> Uh, trust logos are funny though, like on America's Got Talent, um, the people that make the most money on the ad scene on America's Got Talent are the losers in the first round because, you know, it's a 12 year, it's, the show takes 12 years and you don't remember, um, you know, who got fought, you know, quit on the first round and you go to your local comedy club. Oh, ad scene on America's Got Talent. Well, they must be good. Um, also, trust logos can burn you. Um, anyone here heard of uh, My Pillow, Mike Lindell, The Pillow King, late night infomercial stuff? He's somewhere I am uh, up in Minnesota, drug addict turned pillow master. Not making that up, look it up, very interesting. He had a better business bureau of an A plus, went to an F, his business kind of had to change his marketing overnight. Um, these are different weapons of influence, I'm not going to go through all these, but liking, liking, scarcity, authority, social proof, you know, can you replicate it? Other techniques to test, um, fear and pain, benefits not features to eight universal desires. I used to sell timeshare, guys. I was the number one timeshare salesperson for a national company in the country. I was very good at it. And I never talked about the features. Um, I talked about what it's going to make them do, what it's going to make them feel. You know, think about, you know, smell that Hawaii ocean, things like that. I left because I hated my life, but, you know, <laughs> there's that. And play and have fun. This is one of the best things you can do with another client's brand. You can have so much fun with your client's brand and you have no idea. And for the, and again, I've done this on Fortune 500 companies, thank you, uh, time and time again. Please make sure, here's my caveat, you approve all tests before going live. I've only not done that once. Um, it worked out okay, but it was pretty dangerous. Um, but you can make, take these concepts and use your skills and design a simple layout or no image layout for a form, see if it converts better. You know, look at the results of the page. Do five tests a month. Make one test a batshit crazy test. Because every once in a while, that will be the winner that's going to give you that so much lift, you're going to be surprised. But then look at the results and say, you know what, I think we should do this change because of this. And write a hypothesis statement. I believe changing the pricing table this way will give this lift and then we believe this to be true because of this case study we did. But every set of users is different. Don't think because it worked on one client, it's gonna work on another. Um, real quick, I'm gonna say how to get that book where I get that list from. Um, that my slides are in slideshare, so you can get them on there. Dotcom Secrets Labs, com slash free dash book. When you get there, you're gonna get to this page. Fill out the form if you'd like. Opt out, say no, you don't want that. Don't click anything on this page where you bought something, click no thanks at the bottom. Don't click anything on this page, click no thanks at the bottom. What? Oh, dot com secrets labs. Um, come on. Dot com secrets labs dot com slash free dash book. Again, it's on my slides, so you can grab them that way too. I'm just going to jump through these really quick. So you say no thanks. Say no thanks again. Say no thanks again. Then you can close that, close that tab. And then you can unsubscribe if you don't want any emails. This is done by Russell Brunson. Um, you might have seen it on CNBC The Profit. 
um, when he did the Flex Watches episodes, he came out of the supplement and coaching market. His stuff is heavily geared to the direct response market, supplements, coaching, things like that. But I think his stuff is gold and you can apply it to any industry. But I recommend starting the free book before you spend thousands on his other stuff because a lot of people come to me, that just talked about weight loss supplements and I am selling scooters. Well, yeah, but you can take the ideas and kind of apply it to that. So anyway, um, with that, I want to thank you for uh, your time. We have time for maybe one to two more questions. Otherwise, I will be around later for questions, comments, and death threats. Um, that is something that you are interested in. But maybe one to two more questions, and then um, we'll be done. Anybody? Did we, we added two pixels. I know the designer in you hates it, right? <laughs> Anyone else? Yep. Yeah. Uh, again, I I personally don't use any WordPress server level tools to do my testing because it, it's too risky that it's going to be served up to a crawler. So I use a tool like VWO or Optimizely and I just put a JavaScript in my theme file and then that's going to say, okay, 5% of the traffic is going to see the test, 95% is going to see production and then when you find out what the winner or loser is, then you can apply it to production because you don't want to get crawled by Google or a search engine of a test that you're doing. There are WordPress tools that do it. I've, I've found more people hurt their sites than it's worth. So, VWO, Visual Website Optimizer or Optimizely and there's other ones out there because you don't do anything on the server level. You do it on their tool and you use a JavaScript in the theme file to, to serve it up to a percentage of your um, users. Uh, now, if there's a tool you guys use already that you like, keep using it. I, I know there's some good ones out there. It's just my personal preference. So, cool. Thank you so much. I definitely appreciate it. Bye.